degrees outside and they're already burning up up there. So uh, it feels a little chilly to me, but you know, that's all right. I'm okay with that. Uh, so, but tonight, 5.30 prayer meeting, 6 p.m. we'll have our service. And then after the service tonight, we have uh, a farewell fellowship for Brother Pinto uh, tonight. And so let uh, me encourage you to be out for that and be able to say goodbye to him. He is moving to Maine. If you have not seen the estate that he has bought, uh, there are pictures all over Facebook. It is a gorgeous place. Um, I feel a call of maybe, you know, going and, and ministering to Brother Pinto several times throughout the year, uh, especially during the summer there, and spend some time on the, on the river there out back there. But uh, make sure you're here tonight, and I will have some fellowship. If you could bring a dessert or some finger, uh, finger food to, uh, to pass and uh, just uh, enjoy some time of fellowship. Let me encourage you also, we'll have a basket out there for some cards. Uh, get a chance, just drop a card in there and just say uh, thank you and tell him how much he means to you. Uh, he has been here, I think... Uh, when Noah and Moses came by and they, uh, they started Heritage Baptist Church and uh, Brother Pentel's been here since then. They left him here or whatever. Uh, but uh, make sure you do just jot in. Just, and rem- just remind him of what, of what he means to you. And uh, if you stick a little something in there for him, I know he'd appreciate that. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we'll have our Bible study and prayer time. Uh, Brother Tim will be continuing on his uh, message, I believe, this, uh, this coming uh, Wednesday night on the flood. And so we want to be back for that. Uh, there is no Pee Wee or Patch Club this uh, Wednesday night. This is the transition week. Uh, next Wednesday night, a week from this Wednesday night, we'll be starting our summer Bible club uh, for those guys. And we'll have everybody together downstairs. And so with that in mind, uh, I've talked to several of you uh, who are the young adults there about helping out and doing that. We're going to have a quick meeting tonight after church. Um, just we'll let some of the other folks get into the line to get the uh, food from the uh, fellowship and we'll have a five minute meeting be out of there so you'll have time to get out there and knock people over and get your own food uh, for that so make sure you're here for that uh, uh, tonight for that meeting if you would please Saturday morning 10 o'clock soul winning visitation meeting and then a week from this Saturday is a bridal shower from McKenna Burgess 6 p.m. here at the church down in the cafeteria we do ask that you please sign up on the bulletin board. If you have any questions, please see Mrs. Stearns about that. She is uh, organizing that for us. Uh, so that is a week from this coming Saturday. So take note. I'm sorry, no, that's this Saturday, right? It's this, Saturday. this Saturday it is. That was a week from yesterday. That's what it is. Uh, so this coming Saturday, be here and just get signed up so they can get it, make sure they have enough stuff all together uh, for that. And then, uh, see, we'll worry about that after the evening service uh, here tonight. So... <coughs> Choir members, I know it is Father's Day, but uh, 4th of July is also coming up, so we need to be prepared for that. So we will be having choir practice. We are going to push it back a little bit. We're going to start it at 5 o'clock this afternoon, give you a little bit of extra time uh, with your family. So 5 o'clock this evening, we'll meet here in the auditorium. We'll have the AC on. It'll be a little bit cooler. And as we get ready for uh, for the different times uh, coming up uh, for uh, 4th of July and different things like that. Uh, There is no youth activity this Friday night, but a week from tomorrow, we are leaving for camp. And I know it's come up on us a little bit quickly here, but a week from tomorrow, we'll be leaving from, leaving from the church here at 10 o'clock. Uh, so parents, if you can help us out, get here between 9 o'clock, 9.30. Uh, that'll give us an opportunity to make sure we have everything packed up, everything squared away. And we also say that because we know there are people that are going inevitably, to inevitably show up late anyways. So we say 9 to 9.30, we'll have people showing up 9.45. So it'll still give us an opportunity to leave at 10. So um, I'll, I'll be uh, getting you a little bit more information about that, giving you a little piece of paper uh, later this week as uh, we get ready for camp next week. We do have several birthdays to recognize this week, including one today. Today is Caleb Hester's birthday. He's right down here in the front. So make sure when you see him a little bit later, uh, you wish him a happy birthday. On Tuesday, it is Carol Heller's birthday. Is she in here? She is, I know she, I'm not sure if she was helping. She's in junior church today. I know she was uh, helping out with that before. On Friday, First, where, where is she? She's not in, is she in here? On Friday, it is Alyssa Glaspie's birthday, and she's supposed to be in here, not in junior church anymore. Where is she? She just sang with the Patch Club. Not feeling good. Not feeling good. Oh, that stinks. Well, she's here today, too. So, uh, let's see. On Saturday, it is June Gurton's birthday. Is she in here? Missing a lot of people that are, yes, no, no. Okay, on Saturday, I know she's in here. Where is she? There she is. Maggie Lacombe, it is, on Saturday is Maggie's birthday, and uh, so there's a few other people that we might be able to recognize tonight, but is there anybody else that is in the service this morning, has a birthday this coming week that we missed? Anybody at all? Nope? 
Well, let's sing happy birthday to these two then. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. It's also my understanding that on Friday, there's an anniversary. Is that correct, Ferguson's? June 24th, that's this, that's this Friday, right? Yes, this Friday. I don't, they don't know. <laughs> this Friday. How many years is it going to be? 55. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Amen. That is awesome. Congratulations on that. Take your songbooks one last time, if you would, please. Turn to number 502. Number 502 in your songbooks. Let's all stand as we sing, And Can It Be? Number 502. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused him. Appreciate your faithfulness with your tithes and offerings and missions uh, giving uh, throughout the summer already and just encourage you to continue doing that. Of course, always take a look at that number above that door just to remind you of what God is doing and using the money that you put in for missions and how well uh, our missionaries are doing out there uh, getting the gospel out. And so continue praying for them, uh, continue watching, uh, uh, continue to think about them and let them know that you, of your prayers and your, uh, and your thoughts towards them as, as you get opportunity for that. I'm going to ask Brother Clack if you'd please come and pray for our offering this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, you know, thank you for the honor, uh, the privilege, Lord, to be able to be here today in your house. And uh, I pray for our pastor while he's away. I pray to tell you just give him a, a good time with his family and bring him back here refreshed to us later this week. And I pray for the preacher here, Lord. I pray to you fill him with the spirit of God as he preaches to us. And 
pray for the offering. I pray to you, bless it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would, please take your Bibles, go to the book of Isaiah this morning. The book of Isaiah in chapter number 41. Isaiah chapter number 41. We'll be reading verses 10 through 13 this morning. And when you have found Isaiah 41, we'll invite you to stand with us as we read the Word of God. We'll read responsively. I'll read verse 10 and ask you to join me on verse 11. I'll read verse 12 and ask you to join me on verse number 13. Isaiah chapter number 41, beginning at verse 10, the Bible says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And let's go and pray. Father, we thank you again for the great day you've given to us. Pray that you bless now the, the message. I pray that you'd encourage us and help us this morning. Pray in Jesus' name, amen. You can go ahead and be seated. We're going to have Brother Pinto sing for us this morning, but uh, the uh, Spanish have decided to lock him down uh, downstairs. So uh, uh, hoping that they, they get wrapped up with him downstairs, he'll come up and he'll sing for us at the end of service uh, this morning. And he'll be, of course, with us tonight as well. And so I uh, look forward to hearing him. Uh, sing Isaiah chapter 41. There, your Bibles are open. Uh, keep them there. We're going to be there pretty much the whole uh, time uh, with us this morning. Uh, my wife and I, of course, we were out the last couple of weeks out in Missouri with my mom and dad. Uh, and then on Wednesday night, we got to go up and see the Shirillas. How many remember the Shirillas? Oh, okay, about, about half of you remember them. Uh, and they started a church out in Collinsville, Illinois, and they're celebrating their seven years uh, out there this coming uh, spring, or fall, I'm sorry, uh, in the September, October. And uh, so uh, we got to spend a little bit of time with them, uh, got to see their church, spend some time with them in their church and uh, on Wednesday night and preach for them and everything. And then Thursday, we were supposed to get up, spend, some, spend the day with them. And then about 5.30, our flight was supposed to leave St. Louis and head to Baltimore, and then from Baltimore to Hartford and uh, be home in our beds by 2 in the morning on Friday morning. That was the plan. Then we walked into the airport, and my phone buzzed. I don't like that. And so I picked it up, and the first message on there was, Tom Clack, I'm sick. Do you really want me to pick you up? I'll have Dad come get you instead. And I'm like, no, 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 that's all right. Don't put, do that to your dad. Uh, but uh, So the second message that I got there was this. This is from Southwest Airlines. Your flight has been canceled. Why? Um, you know, I wasn't sure if our plane broke out there or something, you know, or what, something like that. If that was the case, that's fine. Uh, we got up to the front there, and uh, the lady said, uh, what flight you on? 
Heather said, we're going to Baltimore. I said, we're going to Hartford. We want to come all the way home. We don't want to stop there. Oh, okay. And so she's looking through her, her little thing there and says, is there anywhere else you'd like to fly into? <laughs> well, now that you say that, uh, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. How about that? Uh, no, it was like, uh, no, Hartford's where we want to go to. Uh, and so uh, she's like, well, uh, you're not going there tonight. Uh, we'll get you on the next flight uh, tomorrow. I said, okay. And they said it'd be 5.30 in the evening. Oh, yeah, that's exactly the way I felt. And so we sent a text to, uh, to the Shirillas. They had dropped us off. I'm like, uh, our flight got canceled. And their response was, yeah! Like, no, that's not my response. I want to be home. Uh, so they were excited because they got me and they got to keep us there for an extra day. And so instead of getting in at 1 in the morning on Friday morning, we got in at uh, about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning and we got home uh, Saturday morning instead. And so by the time we got everything uh, unpacked and doing all the stuff there, we were in bed by 3 in the morning. And I woke up at 6 in the morning. I am not like Pastor. I do not believe in waking up at 4 in the morning. Uh, but uh, I woke up and I had a hard time getting back to sleep. The problem is this, is usually it's not the first day I get back from a flight. It's the second day. So my plan was, was to be back here on Friday, have the whole wound up thing still, and then, you know, die and crash and be completely dead on Saturday. Instead, I'm completely dead today. <laughs> so I tell you that, that if anything comes out of my mouth and you're like, what did he just say? Just say, he's got jet lag. Don't worry about him. Visitors just say, ah, don't worry about him. All right. So, uh, but anyway, uh, but we had a great time out with my mom and dad. Just love getting to spend time with them. And, uh, and as, as we came home, it was kind of bittersweet to leave and we did because, you know, Father's Day. How do you say, bye, Dad, and then walk out the door just before Father's Day. And, uh, but I got to, and his birthday is this week too. And so, uh, you know, I wish we could have stayed a little bit longer, but uh, Father's Day is a, is a great day to just stop and think about uh, how much our dads mean to us and what they do for us. Um, it's fun to watch uh, the little guys around here and uh, anything that happens, anything that goes wrong, they run to dad. Dad can fix anything. Uh, they've got that sense that dad is, uh, is Superman. And, and that's a good thing. Uh, that's the way they should uh, see dad is just being that, that person they have that trust to run to and just, you know, if they need something, they want dad to pick them up. And if they're in dad's arms, everything is just fine. Remember as a kid growing up, that was always the fun thing was being with dad. Uh, dad worked so much. My dad was a hard worker. I mentioned that earlier, but he worked hard. And so anytime we got a chance to be with dad, it was special. Loved to be with dad. Loved to just go ride with him. It was especially great if mom wasn't with him. Uh, my dad has a sweet tooth. He has passed that down to both my brother and I. Uh, but if mom wasn't with us, we were guaranteed to have, some, have a good time. Uh, whether it was stopping at the 7-Eleven uh, for us and there was all that penny candy on the bottom row, uh, that was always awesome. Uh, we were talking about this whenever we were out there this last week, but we had a ritual. Every Saturday night, we'd go to Schnucks. Schnucks is kind of like your local stop and shop or shop ride or whatever. And uh, one thing about Schnucks was this here is they had one aisle where they actually took out uh, the, the shelves and everything, and instead they put in this giant island of Brock's candy, the loose kind. And at either end, there were these paper bags, and you would go through, and they had these, of course, you know, a little guy, it looks like it's the, you know, just the, uh, you know, a land that flows with milk and honey. Uh, this was awesome. You know, just, I mean, just, you know, row after, just, oh, just kept seeing I go on and on, had all kinds of candy. You know, the Brock's caramels and the peppermints and uh, the, the root beer barrels and, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the Royals, I think they called them, those little uh, things there. And dad would just start going down and just grab a little bit of this, throw it in, a little bit of this, throw it in, a little bit of this, throw it in. Every Saturday night, we'd walk out of Schnucks and we'd have a, have a bag full of, of this candy. It was like, you know, $1.99 a pound back then. And uh, so we'd walk out, and man, it was the greatest thing in the world. We'd all be picking at it, you know, and, and picking out what we loved and what we enjoyed and all those things. And, and man, it was, just, it was great uh, going there. I just remember that was, that was dad's thing. He liked to do that uh, with us. And I remember getting up on Sunday morning. My dad drove the church bus, and uh, he would go, and he would be the driver. And uh, he would, uh, when we lived over in Cape, uh, I was sit up in the front. Uh, you know, they had the uh, control panel over on this left-hand side of him. That's where I sat. I was 
uh, we'd go down into a uh, lower uh, part of Cape Girardeau and just pick up kids. And I remember looking back and seeing 50, 60 kids on our bus. And uh, there I was sitting up there next to my dad holding on. I was afraid of everybody on that bus. And, uh, and hold on to my dad. And, and, uh, and even uh, if we moved over uh, to Piedmont, dad would still drive the bus. And, and getting up with him early in the morning, my brother wasn't interested in doing that. Uh, but I would love to be out with dad, love to go wherever he was going. Uh, I remember him carrying me on his shoulders at the parades so I could see what was going on, uh, and, and just enjoying those times uh, with him. Uh, boy, just had great memories of my dad and all those things that went on. But one thing that stood out to me is this here, is that I can remember uh, that any time if I got worried or if there was something that it was just kind of caused me to have some stress in my life, if I just seemed like if I was with dad, it all just melted away. It, nothing. There was not, as long as dad was there, nothing could go wrong. Uh, and that was just, as a little kid, the confidence I had as my dad was that, and that everything was going to be all right. And even this last week, just being at home and just being with mom and dad, dad was there, everything was just fine. No worries. Uh, it's a great thing there. And as you look at Isaiah 41 this morning, I share all that for this purpose here, is I want you to see what God is encouraging his people with this morning. He says this, fear Thou not. Don't worry. Don't worry. Fear thou not. Why? I'm with thee. Well, as a kid, I remember with dad, as long as he was there, everything was just fine. I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And verse 13, I just like what the Lord says here. It says, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. I can see little guys, they're walking on and waddling around here, and they love the stairs, you know, and they get up here on the stairs, and you'll see sometimes dad or mom holding the hand, and, and they'll oh, invariably they will trip, or they will start to fall, and they'll go down, you know, and they're starting to fall over, and dad's or mom's got the hand. All they do is just hold that hand, and they just kind of swing there for a little bit, you know, until they get back on the ground, but they don't go down. Why? Because dad or mom has a hold of the hand. It's not them holding on to dad's hand. It's dad holding on to their hand. And boy, it's a, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. And now notice what he says again, verse 13, for the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand. I'm going to hold your hand. You've got nothing to worry about. You've got, you've got me to rely on. I'm going to take care of you uh, for, uh, for, for, for all eternity. You're mine. John chapter 10, verses 28 through 30, Jesus reminds us that we are in his hand as well as the Father's hand, and no one is able to pluck us out of his hand. We're, we're firmly placed in his hand. There are some words and principles in these verses here I want us to look at this morning to help to remind us in this life of who has us. Who has a hold of us? Who is taking care of us uh, here? Let me just remind you too, dads, just as uh, by way of example, Ephesians 6, 4 gives uh, a command to the dads. He says this here, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You're going to have a big impact on how your children view God. I have total trust in God. My wife and I, we've been talking a lot about some different things going on in life and trying to figure out how we're going to take care of some things. And we both have just this sense in us that, you know, I know it's there, but we just don't have, we just don't worry. God's going to take care of it. And I really believe it comes back to this here is that growing up, I knew I could trust my dad. Was he perfect? No, he wasn't perfect. But I can't tell you one time he failed me. I can't tell you one time he didn't come through for me when I needed the help. I can't tell you one time where I, I walked away saying, man, I'm disappointed in my dad. There was many times my dad was disappointed in me. But I can never tell you a time I was disappointed in my dad. And I know with my wife, too, that with her dad, she's got that same kind of trust that growing up she had that same trust, her dad, that, that love and that, that, that assurance in us, and that carries over into our view of God. Because God is my heavenly father. And when you say that, you got, a, you got instantaneously a picture that comes to your mind of what a dad is supposed to be. And he, usually, God is just like your dad. And that's usually what comes there. And so dads, we've got a very important thing to do here as we, as we, we lead the homes and we lead our families to, 
to lay out a good example for them, not just so that we're, we can stand before God and give a good account, but for our children that come after us to look and say, I've got a good example of what I believe God is and how he's going to act in my life. And so this morning, I want to see a few things here very quickly. Number one, I want you to see is this here is that God wants to see that we can trust him. 